What's up, Cancer? Happy spring. I hope y'all are doing well. We are about to get into your spring equinox reading and see what the season has for you. Um, so if this is your first time here, welcome. If you are returning, thank you so much. And if you are seeking any readings, hypnotherapy, conjure work, you can check that out at the description box below at Lizzie's Charm website. Okay, we have a spring virtual retreat coming up. We will be having some hypnosis, some Reiki going on, some guided and intuitive movement and psychic readings, psychic mediumship readings. And also have, well, Oh no, today is the last day for Pisces birthday. So if you, I believe the discount ends tonight. So happy birthday, Pisces. <laughs> we on cancer and it's about to be Aries season. And yes, it has that, that, that special has ended. So let's go ahead and get into it, Cancer see what it is that the spring energy has for you. What is going on here? What would you like them to know? Okay, so we have Pluto and Aries in the fifth house. So that is a transformation taking place within yourself and how it is that you express yourself, how it is that you show up in your romantic relationships, how you show up with your children. Um, this can even be what it is that you're creating, your creative expression. If you have any type of your own personal business as well, there may be some changes within that. There, something may come to an end or something may be beginning. You know, things may have been in a process of ending and are now in the space of beginning, becoming a new rebirthing with this um, spring energy. Now, there may also be something being healed. Uh, perhaps this could be in your body. This could also just be within yourself, right? How it is that you feel about yourself, how you see yourself, your sense of... Um, it's, it's like in a sense of discerning between who people project upon you and who it is that you actually are, you know, and what it is that actually means, what that looks like for you, okay? This can also be something in regards to, it's like a change in dynamic in the way that you move, how you make things happen, how you initiate things, you know, how it is uh, that you express your excitement, your exuberance. You may be finding a lot of joy and having a lot of fun, tapping into your innocence this spring and really reconnecting with yourself on a very deep level. It's like um, ancestrally, some healing has taken place. There may have been some things that you were mirroring within your family that had been stifling you in some way, right? That could have had you in a dark space, but the light is here, all right? Pluto and Aries in the fifth house. Aries and the fifth house are both rule is fire energy, okay? So it's like purification is happening. It's all, I'm seeing this as like a literal, phoenix rising in a sense you know and if you're not already at that place that is taking place over the progress of spring you know you are really connecting with yourself in a very deep way like your confidence is being reignited you know you're are releasing whatever it is that's stagnating you whatever it is that is not allowing you to be able to uh, show up and be yourself if there has been anything that has been blocking you especially when it comes to what you're creating what you like if you have some type of business for real 
that's coming up very strongly here. If you know something that you can do on your own to attain resources, that's going to be very predominant. Um, is actually going to be very lucrative if you decide to act upon it. You know, if you decide to put your energy into it and make the moves in which it is that it's going to uh, be necessary for you to do that. Okay, this can just also. It's going to be important for you to have a lot of movement as well, like exercising, literally, right? So that you can process through any type of anger it is that's coming up, any type of raging emotions that's coming up that, um, or anxiousness that wants to be excitement, but that may be bogged down by something, something deep, something within you that's living that wants to be sent into the flames you know so i could talk about that for forever but let's pull some tarot cards and see what's going on here the cancer for the cards in the second half of spring cancer, cancer. what would you like them to know what other messages do you have for them for the spring equinox A sweet, loving, and nurturing cancers. Y'all's energy is very mellow. Even though all this fire energy is here, it's very contained. First time. Okay, Cancer. So it's definitely some healing taking place. All right, some transformations going down. And so the first card that we have here is the Seven of Coins. Okay, and the Seven of Coins is basically about a harvest, right? Something that you have been working on, something you have been um, attempting to manifest in regards to like a material based thing. So this is finances, this is um, possessions, right? This is also like lineage, legacy kind of energy. This is the things that we pass down to our children um, or to our family members who con connect with us kind of thing, right? But the seven of coins in particular in this deck, it, um, it does speak about reaping a harvest, but it can't, but this is also saying a lot of take care and tend to who it is that you are sharing yourself with, right? Make sure that it's not being received in vain, right? Because you're not showing up doing anything in vain, but making sure that who you're connecting with is who you're supposed to be connecting with, right? It, who, who you are wanting to spend time and enjoy life with, it's who you're supposed to be doing that with. And, mm, okay, because you may be focused on the wrong thing. Okay, so at first I was saying that you may be, maybe focused on the wrong thing. Right, because she's looking back and her the happiness is here. But what I'm seeing is, is that you are leaving the past in the past, letting things go, like whatever had been weighing on you, whatever was heavy, um, especially in regards to like material things, you're finding happiness, you're finding success, you're finding connection and like family. It's like family tie kind of energy, friendship and celebration, you know, and really moving forward and ending old cycles in regards to your emotions. And in this, this is allowing you to reap an abundance that um, you don't know, really recognize or know is coming. And it's like you are, your focus is now in this place of recognizing where it is that your feelings and, and your emotions and your energy needs to be placed in order to uh, grasp this that's being grown here. Okay. Um, 
because she was trying to feed these pigs some pearls and they walking away, you know, but she's not, it's almost as if she did not recognize that they, that that was more valuable than to who and which it is that she was giving it to based off of her not really paying attention in the right direction in the first place. But things seem to be the pigs, the pig is walking into the, this here, right? So all has not been lost because the bounty is moving forward into this. It's like the focus is no longer on whatever it was that was trying to be grown here. It's like the dynamic is changing. The feeling, she got this blue on, is changing, okay? And so the second half of spring, we have the ancestors. So the ancestors, this is the death card. So you may be reconnecting with yourself. You're again, your innocence, right? Pluto and Aries in the fifth house. Okay, so this is you really coming out on the other side of something. And it's allowing you to be able to make some new plans. There's some maybe planning on some travel, making plans to move. Um, it's you're at a new place in your life and your trajectory is changing, it's shifting. And that's about to start taking place come the second half of spring. And so you may be getting ready to move. Um, you may be letting go of, again, things that have been heavy, that has been baggage, that um, has been living with you in a sense for a really long time and the load is lightening significantly. Like this is, this is Pluto in, in Aries energy. Again, that is coming up very strong. You are having a very deep transformation within who it is that you are, how you show up, you know, how you, ex again, how you express yourself, how you connect with people, um, even your work, okay, where you're going, this river, he, he trying to figure out, well, you know, I got to get to the other side. So what needs to be let go of? What needs to be rebirthed? Perhaps there is, um, uh, maybe you're going to be, this could be something about, right? Because this is a lot about resources for you as well. So this is, this ancestors card um, can speak about like banking loans, um, institutions that you borrow money from, okay? And that being recalibrated for, for you, a release of what has been, a release of whatever it is that your ancestors have experienced and you're doing things in your own way in a new life. Okay, so let's see, what else do we have here? For cancer, for spring, cancer. The messages for cancer. Maybe a lot of celebrations or a lot of gathering going on in the first half of spring. A lot of connecting. What else is here? What else is here for cancer? Okay, so yeah, it's action being taken. This is the Sith mermaid, and she says, the power that creates and sustains you heals you. And so this has a lot to do with that, what lives within you. Again, this is more Scorpio, more Pluto energy. Okay, so uh, this healing that's taking place, this is from a very deeply ingrained place within you this is something that has been existing pretty much all your life okay the sith mermaid um one it speaks about it says she says summon the forces of light to aid your life for prayers are gateways and charms that disperse darkness the sith mermaid a dangerous fairy succubus who sucks blood out of a man with whom she has intercourse represents vampire humans whose presence is draining they look at life negative negatively and draw on others positive energy to invigorate their own destructiveness only by keeping a clear mind and constant touch with your intuition and psyche will you avoid losing sight of your everyday goal and long-term ambitions. You may also need to see how much help you can accept without it causing harm to someone who is kindly helping you. So what I'm getting is that you're getting away from those people, any type of energy like that. So when we connect with people who like 
are of a draining type of presence, um, see things in a negative light uh, or turn people's positive things into negativity. Um, this is usually because there's something within us that drew them to us, right? So that energy is leaving you. It's more of a focus on on these prayers, on these gateways and charms, right? Dis dispelling this darkness and really getting in touch with how it is that your mind thinks, where it is that you're going and following that spark within you so that you can connect with this happiness, with this joy, with this connection with others, having, again, this like really strong familial energy um, or surrounding you, feeling very supported in what it is that you're doing, right? Because you know, someone here is helping you. Um, and it may be someone of family in some regard. <clears throat> this could be love, a love interest. It could easily just be a friend, but Ten of Baskets is very familial celebrations. Like in traditional tarot deck, it's a family walking towards a rainbow, you know? So this is really getting out of that spell of, of even how it is that you drain your own energy by way of how you think about things, how you perceive things, how you um, choose to feel about things, you know, or who it is that you interact with, who it is that you feel you need to interact with, okay? And it's a lot of healing taking place. Um, it's a lot of elevation happening in the first half of spring. What else do we have here for Cancer Spirit? Yeah, because <laughs> the second half, you got the water leaper. And the water leaper is speaks about uh, elevation, I believe. Let me see. What did I just say? Yeah, it's about elevation. And it says, you will rise by taking steps and overleaping nothing, right? And what that is basically saying is like the moves that you're making, what it is that you're choosing to do is it's with ease. All right, this is a toad with wings and a tail, all right? So this is like a, a chimera, basically. Um, you doing this in a way that is unexplainable to the human idea, in a sense, right? It's, it's very magical in the way in which it is that this is going because it, it has been so hidden, right? This is not really... This is one of those things that you can't really put into words for real. It says the water leaper, a giant winged toe reveals that your imagination, thought and intelligence will bring spiritual elevation in the light of justice. This metamorphic creature predicts that your good deeds will bring their own improvements. Preoccupied with breaking fishing lines, the water leaper suggests that you may need to sever a wrong relationship or cut away from an idea that's detrimental to your progress. A single decision could change things far more than you realize. It will transform your life for the better in a way than you could have anticipated. Follow your dreams and trust your instincts because you are going somewhere exciting. Okay, so the, again, this definitely, these were, relationships could have something there may be somebody in your family that you may have to uh cut ties with yeah at the bottom you have success the cracking says success and happiness your success and happiness lies within you okay um or it could have been someone that really resonated with that you resonated with in a sense uh somebody that kind of felt like home to you or in home in the sense that they reminded you of some old shit, uh, reminded you of you know, something, old, right? something old, something from before, because this ancestors card, this is when the death card or the ancestors or Pluto, any kind of Scorpio energy comes up. This is about what has been right for so long, what has been, and it is a, a transformation taking place within this. Okay, it is a, um, wow, it is a lot of Scorpio energy here. It is a, it's a very significant transformation taking place for you this spring. What else is here? Yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. So you have your rain is here in the first half of spring. This is like a radical change. The decision, in, the decision it is that you're choosing to make is shifting the trajectory of your life in a way in which you have not been consciously aware to be possible. So it's like elevating you. This is also Uranus is in Taurus right now. So again, this has to do with your possessions, your finances, um, what it is that you have, how it is that you make your money. But this also rules Aquarius. And right now we have Saturn there. We have Saturn there. And right now uh, Mars and Venus is there. And it'll be there until, uh, boy, for about another month, I think. So with that, this is a lot about your responsibilities, your what you commit yourself to, um, your sense of self-worth, your sense of values, what it is that you uh, recognize is worth your time and what is not, right? And that this is coming out on top of this seven of, of coins, like you're seeing where it is that you need to place your energy and where you have been trying to do that before it, it wasn't it. Or maybe it was the way in which it, that she was going about doing it, right? Because she's she's like, I'm going to do this this way. I'm going to feed these pigs this. You know, it'll it give them some health. Because pearls, they're good for the skin. If you ingest pearls, they're very healthy for the bloodstream or something like that. Look it up because <laughs> I can't be certain. But because um, it's like... <laughs> She's putting these pearls down, but and she's looking the opposite way. But when you go to the next card, all the women in the picture they have on the pearls. Okay, so is it's like you're choosing with it being on the feminine, you're choosing happiness, you're choosing pleasure, you're choosing to feel good, you're choosing to see things through a uh a more compassionate, nurturing, empathetic lens, in a sense. Um, but even yourself, more so yourself, it's like you are seeing the beauty in you, right? And taking action on it. Mars is about action. You got this Sith mermaid card here. What else is here? Oh, okay. In the second half of spring, you got Mercury. So it's a lot of communication going on. It's definitely, it's definitely some plans going on in order for movement. Um, there may be some new work. You may be learning something in the second, um, second half of spring as well. You may be doing something new in regards to creativity. Again, this has to do with your resources. Perhaps this is something in regards to small business, if you have a small business, um, or you could be up on your routines and taking care of yourself, really focused on your health, uh, paying attention again to your intuition, listening to the messages it is that you are receiving, really getting the response it is that you were desiring from the questions that you're asking from the insight you were desiring to have at this time, you know, so that you can uh, move Mercury in a way in which it is that you want to, that is going to support you. So it's a lot of air sign energy here. You may be connecting with someone of an air sign, perhaps an Aquarius or a Gemini. Could be even connecting with a Virgo um, as well. But in that, this is it's about elevation. It's like you are gaining higher knowledge in incorporating something that you're learning in regards to that, like it's supporting you in some type of way. Let's see, what else is here? Yeah, okay, so for the first quarter of spring, we have the S of Lotuses, the Squire of Time, this is kind of like the Page of Cups, but the deity here is Seishat, and she she is the keeper of time, basically. Uh, so maybe connecting with astrology, it's going to serve you a lot um, because it's going to help you know when it is that you are needing to do a thing. 
right? It's going to help support you know that everything is happening in divine timing, the experiences it is that you had before were necessary so that you can know what it is that you know now, so that you can do what it is that you're doing now in the way in which it is that you're going about it, right? So that you can, so that you can really free yourself. It's a lot of autonomous energy. It's a lot of Gemini energy here. Okay, so in the second half of spring, because this card is Gemini as well, this here. Okay, and then we have the four of scarabs. So that is like the, the four of um, pinnacles in a sense. So that it does speak about stability, but this is the lover's card. This is mercury energy and communication, All right? So there's a lot of communication happening here. Um, you may be building new relationships, uh, doing a lot of networking as well, meeting new people opening up and expanding to ways that can help you uh, gain the stability that you want, again, in the way in which it is that you want, that you think things should go. You may also be shifting the way in which it is that you think to a way that can, um, that's allowing you to see things very clearly. It's a lot of clarity happening here. It's almost like um, you are seeing the, the the missteps that you took so that you can now do it in a, a more correct way. And it's easy, it's light as well. It's, you are letting go a lot of, of a lot of baggage, a lot of burdens. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, these are a lot of cards. Um, so I'm not going to do first and second half with this. I'm going to just talk about this. So the first card that came out was the rod and the money safe, right? And the money safe is opened up towards the rod. So the rod can speak about um, conflict and struggles, right? But that is coming to an end. Uh, it can also speak about family quarrels. Right. But the money safe is open towards it. So it's like these things ending, this healing taking place within your mind, how you think about things, how you perceive things is opening you up to some new sense of finances, money, some unexpected money. And then we have the bride in the fish. So there may be some marriage, some pregnancy here for you in spring. Um this can also just be speaking about you being committed to your psychic awareness, to your spirituality as well, to your soul self, but it also speaks about inheritance to the bride is looking at the fish. So there, there may just be a woman that you know who is getting married and pregnant and having a baby, you know, um, yeah, but it's a lot of money here. You're making a lot of money or in the in the process of making a lot of money, right? By choosing the right direction. You have the roads here at the bottom, okay? And you have the tower with Taurus here. You know, you're letting go of the ideas that are not gonna be as lucrative for you as you thought. Like all the ideas are great ideas. But uh, some, some, there are some whose weight holds more than another. One last card for Cancer Spirit. <clears throat> One last card for Cancer. Okay. So you got Surrender, and this is Isis. Okay. So it's time for you to just relax and let go. You got joy at the bottom. <laughs> it's going to be a nice spring for you, Cancer. You just have to trust the process and go with the flow and do what it is that's needing to be done. And so in this deck, she's called Iset, Iset, goddess of spiritual surrender. She is from Nubia, Egypt, the temple of the high priestess, and her element is the bush. So this is earth energy. 
So more, more possessions, more worthiness, more self-love, more connections, a lot of reconnection with the innocence of yourself. I keep feeling like I want to cry in a sense, like, but it's like happy tears, like, whoo. A uh, goddess is said is revered as a magical healer and sorceress. She's of 10,000 names. You may know her as Isis, her Greek name, or Aset, Aset, Wuset. Iset was worshipped in ancient Nubia, the Sudan region, Egypt, and beyond. Her guidance says, let it all go. Say, out, say aloud now, I surrender. These words cast a spell, breathe them in. The embodiment is to release control, stop bonding around struggle. Hand the keys to the, to the divine, allow spirit to carry you and fill in the gaps. You don't have to figure it all out. God, goddess, has your back. Have faith in where you are at this moment. The declaration says, everything I need to know finds me at the perfect time. Yeah, so if... It's not people who are encouraging you to do things in a way that you can take care of yourself and um, can expand upon what it is that you have, what it is that you're growing, right? Who have your best interests at heart, who are looking out for you. They're probably not the people for you. If it's people who every time y'all get together is like, it's a struggle. It's talking about struggling and not what y'all about to do to get about this struggle. All the innovative ways, all the Uranian and mercurial ways that you can figure out to expand upon this, they're not the people for you. And I feel like these people may be very close to you in some sense, or maybe you used to deal with them and you're trying to come back kind of thing. I don't really know how this is going for you. Whatever your story is, whatever, however you live in your life, you know your story. I don't. Okay. <laughs> however it goes, it's best that you do what is in your best interest, what is going to bring you happiness, what is going to bring you fulfillment, who is going to, um, who's showing up for you, who's looking out for you, who is helping you expand, who is helping you grow. Spring is all about growth. It's about blooming. But you're going to be able to see this. It's very clear. It's a lot of clarity here. Uranus and Mercury, Gemini and Aquarius energy. Like they they don't want nothing but the truth for real. You know, they they telling it like it is, no matter who feelings it hurt. They don't Uranus in in Mercury. Don't care about your feelings. <laughs> it's air energy. All right. They they care about what makes sense. And that's it. So, you know, take it all with a grain of salt. But I hope that this message blesses you. I hope that it resonates for you. Um, and yeah, I will see you very soon in the airy season reading cancer. And I hope y'all have a wonderful spring. And I will talk to y'all soon. Bye.